Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We use this time tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, to saturate the room with your praises, hallelujah. We don't come out for nothing, Father, in the name of Jesus. We all have different needs, but we know that you can meet every one of them. We ask that you accept on tonight, Father, our praises. Hallelujah, we ask that you accept our worship. There are things, Father, deep inside us that only you know, things that we don't even wanna face ourselves. But on tonight, we commit to make a change. We recently came off of a fast, and the re results of the fast are not over, Father. Our hopes and desires are not over. Our expectations are not over. We expect great things, Father, manifesting in the atmosphere, hallelujah. We take this time and every day right up until the change in our church for your honor and glory, hallelujah. The changing of the guards, Father, in the name of Jesus. It's not too early to praise you for that, hallelujah. It's not too early to petition before you, hallelujah, for the things that we need to change and elevate within ourselves. Let us all go up, hallelujah, as our leaders go up. Let us all take our rightful places. Holy Spirit, move within us, hallelujah. We welcome you to be active in our lives. Hallelujah, you have access in our lives. Move according to how our Father would have us to move. When we don't listen, when we're stubborn, when we're hard-headed, guide us, hallelujah. We know that you're gonna do your job whether we want you to or not. We thank you for that. We thank you for the guidance and for the covering. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let every witness tell the truth in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We are witnesses for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We're not just claiming to be, but we practice. Although we are faulty and fallible, Every day we seek you more and more. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you're not a man that you should lie. We thank you that we can trust you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we stand up and we decide to be people who you can trust. Hallelujah. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, Holy Spirit, with our walk. Glory. Hallelujah. We are not here just for vain glory. We're not here just to do something, just to spend time and just to pass time. Father, honor our sacrifice in our coming. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Strengthen us in our going, that we may be witnesses when we go out. Hallelujah. For your truth and your honor and your glory, that we're beyond just spectators. We're beyond milk drinkers. But now, Father, we eat meat, and it's time for us to feed your people in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As I stand up here and I walk back and forth, hallelujah, I represent my brethren, my sisters and my brothers. As we all say, have your way in our lives, Father. Move. And when we walk out of here tonight, don't let us leave the word, but take the word with us. And be prepared to dispense it to your people. In the name of Jesus, have your way on tonight, Father. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God some glory. Come on and open up your mouth and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands and give him glory for he's worthy. He's worthy. Come on. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. I will bless his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody open up your mouth and give God some glory. Hallelujah. How many know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think? Amen. Hallelujah. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.
somebody give God some glory don't give up on God because he won't give up on you amen hallelujah come on and bless his name for he's worthy come on he's worthy to be praised hallelujah glory to your name Jesus hallelujah bless the Lord bless the Lord hallelujah glory to God hallelujah thank you Jesus oh give thanks y'all unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever amen hallelujah glory to God Oh, give thanks unto the 
know that he's good. Hallelujah. Come on. He's good. He's good. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on. I need you to clap your hands and give God some praise. Come on. I need you to clap your hands and give God some glory. I need you to give thanks unto the Lord because he is good. He is mighty. He is awesome. He is great. Somebody give God some glory. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. Somebody give God some praise. I don't care if it's a Tuesday night. That's right. Hallelujah. I'm not waiting for Sunday to give my God the praise. That's right. But I'm going to give my God That's the praise right. on a Tuesday yes. night. I'm going to give my God the praise on a Wednesday night. Yes. On a Thursday night. Yes. On a Friday night. Yes. All night long. I'm going to give my God some praise. Yes. Because he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm going to make the devil out of a liar on tonight. Hallelujah. I was battling a headache for three days. But thanks be to God because I serve a God that is awesome. Because I serve a God that's a healer. Because I serve a God that's a provider. Hallelujah. I can come in the house. Hallelujah. And get my healing. I can come in the house and wave my hands. I can come in the house and tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Oh glory. Listen, she all right right there. <laughs> oh give thanks unto the Lord. Because he is worthy to be praised. There is no God like our God. Do you realize and recognize that our God is absolutely awesome? He is the favored one. He is the great I am. He is our everything on tonight. And I'm so blessed and excited because I'm alive today. He woke me up this morning. He gave me access to this day that I could fulfill everything that was done in this day. And it's still not over because God is a good God. God is a great God. God is a keeping God. God is a miracle working God. God is a preserving God. God is our consuming fire God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Woo! Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. I'm so glad that he's not done with us yet. Oh, glory. Every morning there's new mercy. Every single day there's new grace that has been extended to us. Forgetting the things of yesterday and declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made for us. And we got access to rejoice without restraint. Without restraint and to be glad in it. God is so pleased with those that don't mind giving him worship and praise because that's where he dwells. He occupies in the vessels that don't mind praising him, that don't mind celebrating him, that don't mind loving on him. I tell you one thing, I said, it's amazing if you've ever been in love, you know that you just like to talk about that individual all day long. They used to call it like that puppy love because you just ain't really got nothing to talk about, but you still talking about something. I'm here to tell you on today, there is no greater love than the love of God. At any given moment in time, you can just talk about him because you know he's going to love on you even if you don't open up your mouth. He's going to love on you. But think about the fact when you can open up your mouth and love on God and appreciate him for all the things that he's done, the things that you even forgot to say thank you for. And he's still doing it for us. The things that slipped our mind that's just so common in our life that we don't think to take the time and say, God, thank you for it. Ooh, my God, my God. Oh, Lord. There's a song that they, the, um, I, I can't remember who that old school gospel singers are, but they said millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. The whinings, that's it, the whinings. I used to love that song. That song used to just break me down because I'm saying there are so many people that are lost in this world and they may never find God. 
but I was one of the ones who did. And I'm so grateful and thankful that every time I think about it, I can give his name the praise. I can give him the glory. Y'all, I'm, I'm excited on tonight. I'm, I'm thankful for who God is. I'm thankful for the plan that he has for each of our lives on this evening. And for the most part, I am thankful that God always gives us his word. His promises are found in his word. Our healing is found in his word. Our growth and elevation, your, the key word tonight, is in his word. And tonight, while we are going to get ready to get our Bibles and dig right into this, because Sunday, I think Apostle might have just sparked every individual in this room that was present. And I went home and I told him, I called him the next day, I said, man, listen, I said, that word was so on point. He said, you have to dig from around you. And I, I just thought about that thing. And, and my sister sent us in, in our sibling text, a man digging. And, and I'm telling you, that thing was so funny, but it was, it was so, he was so in tune in his dig. Because we have to be so precise in this season to get any and everything from around us that will halt our forward movement in the things of God. So when I looked at that, I, I said I was going to piggyback off of one of the chapters that he talked about, but God said to share with the people on tonight, there is a spiritual preparation to operate in God's power. There's a spiritual preparation to operate in God's power. And when I thought about that, when God dropped that title on me, he brought me back to what Apostle said on Sunday. Because there's stages that we have to take to get to the place of operating in God's power. Because we know for a fact what God's power is capable of doing. We know what his spirit is capable of coming in and transforming because we're here. So at some point in our lives, God transformed us to be effective in the things of God so that we can be that duplication of his life. But God said, there are those that are still digging. And in the process of the still digging, you've got to get to a point to allow God to spiritually prepare you. Because in this time that we are in, in this season that we are in, we got to know that there's nothing left in our trenches. Nobody can poke you. Nobody can go off on you. Nobody can step on your toe. Nobody can say anything. Nobody can do anything. Because at the end of the day, whatever they say, they do, whatever they think, however they move, it ought not to matter to you. Because you've been through the spiritual preparation and you are ready for the move that God wants to do through you. So tonight, I want to go back to Job chapter 11 really quickly. And I'm going to read it right out of the King James Version because God just stretched some things in this for me because I had to go back and reread all of that stuff because Sunday was just, it was amazing for me. And the word was so timely. So Father, we praise you right now as every heart is attentive to your word that you will move mightily, Lord God, in the heart of your people on tonight. Touch them that the word might bring forth revelation to their life, oh God that it might cause them, Lord God, to grow even the greater, oh God, in everything that they say and do. And Father, for all of those that are watching, oh God, create a habitation wherever they dwell, oh God, as they're watching this broadcast. Touch their homes, Lord God, that it might be ignited with the fire of the Holy Ghost. And we thank you for all of these things on tonight. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. Glory to God. So Job chapter 11. Glory to God. And I'm going to read verse 13 out of the King James Version. And it says this. If thou prepare thine heart. And I pause right there for a second. Because when I read these passages of scripture Sunday, I read with so much excitement. But I had to slow it down when I got home and reread it again. And he said, if you prepare your heart 
This is you taking your own inventory to get to spiritual preparation to operate in God's power. He said, if you prepare thine heart and stretch out whose hands? Thine hands toward him. Not toward everything else, but toward him. And the amazing thing is, when you get in the right position in God and you become prostrate before him, it's amazing the things that you can speak from your heart because your attention is not any place else. And when you have that connection, it's just like putting a plug in an outlet. When you put the plug in the outlet, you know that it is generating power. God said, when you stretch your hand toward me, you are generating power power. Why? Because that's a place of surrender. It's a place that it is not my will, but it is your will, God. It is the place where I say, I surrender all and all to you I owe. It has nothing to do with me, God, but I'm going to give you all of me because I know when I give you all of me, I'm going to get the best of you. So he said in verse 14, if iniquity be in whose heart, thy, in, the, in whose hand, thine hand, put it far away. This ain't for nobody else in this season to put away your stuff. This is the season where we put away our own stuff. So that means we got to do inventory checks on a consistent basis because it's amazing. The more we dig, you know when a rain comes, when the rain comes and hits the dirt, do you realize that dirt moves and shuffles? Because the worms, the, they pop up. That's why the birds show up when it rains. Because they know that the rain beating down on the dirt is going to move it in certain areas and it's going to expose the thing that they need. Well, it's the same thing with us. If there's iniquity, we've got to be able to dig consistently. I don't just dig today and then I'm perfect tomorrow and the rest of my walk. No, because the enemy is crafty. He comes in as a roaring lion. He's going to try to do anything that he can do to add more dirt to your ditch. But God said, if I'm commanding you to dig those things that are around you, then I will cause you to pay attention to the things that violate your ditch. He said, if iniquity be in thine hand, Put it far away and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. Clean and constantly. Clean and constantly. The other day, me and Jerry just felt the need. We just started clean like it was springtime. But you got to know that there is always a need to clean your house. Not your natural house. This house. Because this is the temple where God dwells. And every time we clean this house, we make it ready for spiritual preparation. Because God said, I can use a vessel that is spiritually prepared for my use. We're going to get to it and we're going to see. He said in verse 15, for then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. So I don't have to wait for nobody to call me out. I don't have to wait for nobody to pray for me. I don't have to wait for nobody to tell me that I'm in a place. Because when you are in spiritual preparation, God deals with, guess what? You. In the process of it, see, nobody knows where you are until you reveal where you are. And when you reveal where you are, that's when God shows up. And people won't see you. They're going to see God. They're going to know that you've been doing some spiritual inventory. Because it's not about you and what you say. But it's all about what God is doing through you. And what God is saying through you. And that's what he's looking for from out of us. And sometimes we'll find where people say, well, you know, I don't really um, mean to say this. But I just want to no, know because it's not about what you got to say. See, we're in a season that we don't cause offense to anyone because we're all growing in a spiritual preparation. So that means that God is dealing with all of us to bring us all into a place. So when we begin to dig, and this is what I loved about verse 15, he said, for then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot. 
You know when you're in the presence and you're ready to be able to be used by God because you know it, it's just like <laughs> I laughed the other day at, at, at Little Rel. He'll go into the bathroom, he'll put the water, the rag under the water, and then hang it back up on the thing. Like, and, and sometimes, you know, you got to just catch them, you know, because they, they think they slick. But I did like this. I said, I said, well, I said, that smelled like water. I said, which soap did you use for your face this morning? He said, one of those. Well, well which one? I don't know because I, I, I just can't remember. But the spots were still on his face. Still on his face. The, 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 the morning slob, I call it the morning dew, was all on his face. And when I look at the scripture here, he said, but then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot. You know when your face is dirty. You know when it needs to be. <laughs> you know when it needs to be cleansed. And this is how we get so caught up. We're going to read another passage of scripture. And God said, listen, we've got to consider our own ways because we are now behind schedule. Because the world is still going full force. It is going so speedily to destroy the lives of all of those that are around us. But let, let, let's keep going because we got we to cover some grounds tonight. He said, for then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. I said, so you mean to tell me we got to be still even when it seemed like our ditches are not being cleansed? Because as fast as we dig that ditch to get everything from around us is as fast as the enemy going to try to come up against you to come with some other nonsense. But we have to know, listen, I recognize that. As the word says, let Satan get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. So we have to graduate to know you might have camouflaged it one way, but it still has the same DNA blueprint on the back of it. So once I get to the place that I cleanse myself of iniquity, I can now see, I can smell, I can hear, I can sense clearly and know that this is just another form of your nonsense. Let's, let's go real quick to Hosea chapter number 10. Because you got to be able to know and sense in this season the trickery of the enemy. Because he doesn't care how he uses things. All he's concerned about is that he's effective in using it. There is a spiritual preparation to operate in God's power. Hosea chapter number 10. And I want to read one verse out of there and then we're going to go into Hebrews. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, out of the King James Version. It says in verse 12, <laughs> So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up whose fallow ground? Your fallow ground. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. You got to sow until you feel that God has placed you in a place of righteousness. And see, sometimes we don't always feel it, but you got to keep sowing because the word says here, he said, then when you sow in righteousness, he said, you reap in mercy. Do you know that the mercy of the Lord is great? His mercy is extended. It endures forever. His mercy is new every morning. He continues in the mercy of who he has made us to be so that we can do what? Break up our fallow ground. He said, I give you everything you need every day to sustain you that you would be the breaker in your own life to destroy anything that would try to come up against you because I'm after spiritual preparation. And in order to prepare you, i got to extend some things to you. That's just like putting a shovel in my hand 24-7. And every time the enemy comes, he said, no time to remember, sow it to yourselves in righteousness. Keep being righteous. Did not apostle say on Sunday, he said, when it gets to the point that you have gotten in the things of God, he said, righteousness will precede you. 
it will be your guide at that point. So that means I got to keep sowing until I recognize that righteousness is now my director. Sometimes people will come and try you for your right standing. But listen, they will come. They will come after you for your right standing just to prove and justify that the things of the world is right or that they won't break you down for the things that you won't come succumb to. But the devil is alive because if you continue daily to keep sowing in righteousness, God said you'll reap in mercy. I will cause you to be merciful even when people want to hate on you. When people want to scandalize you, when people want you to give up, when people don't want you to stand, you will stand. Why? Because you've sown. He said, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come, I love this, and rain righteousness upon you. He said, sow to yourselves in righteousness till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Sow in righteousness till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Do you realize when you sow, there's an automatic system that says that the clouds have to form to at some point bring rain? The, even before the rain comes, there is a saturation called dew. That every morning when the air is at that crispness, it begins to meet the humidity of the air and it causes the drops to go on the blade of the grass. So even when there is no rain, there is still rain. He is watering the very thing that you are sowing to yourself. So even when you think that you are in a sense of a drought, he said, I am creating an atmosphere that is raining on you and you don't even realize that it's raining on you yet because the dew is a smaller drop than a big drop of rain. Dew is not easily noticeable, so it will seem like nothing is really going on in your life. But if you understand that if I be still, he said the sun Sowing, the sowing that you are putting forth, it is preparing you spiritually. And while it might not be a big explosion, you might just walk up to somebody and say, God bless you, I love you. You might just walk up to somebody and give them a hug. You might just walk up to somebody and tell them, just hold on, change is coming. It don't matter how it comes out, but what matters is that your dew is dropping and the rain is falling. Oh, God, my God, my God. The devil has played tricks on us to make us think that we got to operate like the next person. But the devil is alive because God said, what I've equipped you with, what I've given you is sufficient for me. Go to Hebrews chapter 13. We're going to be over the, all over for a little bit, a little bit tonight. Oh, my God. There is a spiritual preparation to operate in God's power. My God, Jesus is in the old school Bible. Hebrews chapter 13. So some of these pages, you flip them, they might just fall. Hebrews chapter 13, two verses. Verse 20 and verse 21. He said in verse 20, now the God of peace I underline that because our God is a God of peace. And the amazing thing is we don't take full advantage of the God of peace. Because do you realize when stuff in your life, you keep hearing apostle talk about, I've never been in so much peace in all my life. At this age that he's at, he's talking about peace. But do you realize you can have peace as a child? You can have peace as a teen. You can have peace as a young adult. You can have peace as a seasoned adult. God said, it is my peace, the peace of God. As the word declares, it makes nothing missing. It causes nothing to be broken. It saturates your heart and mind to cause you not to think on anything other than him. And this is where we have to be when we're talking about spiritual preparation. Because you can't worry about anything. Worry will not generate peace. 
your own thoughts and decisions will never generate peace. Peace is declared that there's nothing missing and nothing broken in your lives. The things that we consider to be missing are the things that God said, I've already fulfilled it. The things that seem like they're broken, God said, I've already restored it. You just don't recognize it. So when you operate in his peace, his peace does greater than what we could ever imagine. He said it again. Now, the God of peace, I love this, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Do you realize what Jesus went through in order to bring us peace? He said that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. So he brought him back from the dead. He turned around and became our shepherd that we might be led by him. And then he turns around and says through the blood that was shed to give us an everlasting covenant. That's peace. That's peace. But then he turns around. <laughs> he says in verse 21, make peace you perfect i'm gonna read that last part of 20 again through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect i said god we would never be perfect he said you're right he said but perfect when i looked it up in a couple of translations and then did the research with this word perfect he said it's just making you ready. I said, what? He said, so my peace makes you ready. I said, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, God. You telling me that if I get into a place of peace, peace is all I need to make me ready? Because God said, listen, I occupy peace. When we just read the last passage in Hosea, he turned around and said, that's my dwelling there. But we walk and listen right here and he says, now the God of peace, when you realize and understand what I'm getting ready to do for you, he said, I'm about to make you ready. I said, God, well, what, what is ready? He said, I'm making you perfect or ready in every good work to do his will. I said, so you making us ready for the good work. Well, what's the good work? He said, number one, Tanya, tell the people an enriched life is part of my good work. An enriched life, ready to distribute, not to murmur and complain. I said, wait a minute. So if you making me ready, you telling me in order to be ready, my life has to be enriched. And in order to be enriched, that means I got to drop murmuring and complaining because what I'm about to distribute from what you have placed on the inside of me doesn't have room to house God's peace and murmuring and complaining. Murmuring and complaining is not an enriched life. Murmuring and complaining is what's going to cause people to not be a part of God's power. God's power can only show up in the midst of peace. This is why when you find most often people begin to hear the voice of God, they say when they're in the shower or they hear God, you know, when the rain is falling or they hear God in the quiet and the still. Do you realize that all of that represents peace? Rivers flowing, it brings peace. Water dropping, it brings peace saturation of his presence it brings peace all of that is a resemblance and God said anything that does not distribute that brings forth murmuring and complaining murmuring and complaining has a noise to it and God said that you won't be ready to distribute my peace when there is noise go to first Timothy chapter 6 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I'm still in the King James Version. 
We're talking about Paul's in, in that verse 21. Make you perfect in every good work. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 18. And it says that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to, to communicate, laying up in store for themselves what a good foundation against the time to come. Do you know that a time is coming that is going to challenge your peace? A time is coming that is going to cause you to weigh your standards. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, you want the spirit of the Lord to lift up a standard against it. And the only way that can be done is when you are distributing in your life and in richness in the things of God. How do I promote that? Shut my mouth. If You know how your mother used to say, if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all? Well, if you don't have nothing good that will complement and bring out the peace of God, don't say nothing at all because God is making you ready. And in making you ready, it means that you can't just open up your mouth and say anything because you feel like it. Every word is felt against you if it's not his word. He said in that latter part of 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on what? Eternal life. So you mean to tell me that my words are banking on me living an eternal life? My words can change my direction to where I spend my eternity? See, we don't think that the words that we speak out of our mouth has the ability to transform and alter the direction and the course of our day. But I dare you to challenge yourself and try it. Because the moment you start murmuring and complaining and speaking negativity, your whole day goes in that direction. But the moment you wake up with the joy, the peace of God, and you start to speak life, your day aligns with your words. Even when hell is going on around you, the ditch that you dug, it still gets everything from around you. So even when I'm speaking good and evil is trying to be present, God knows how to revolt it and keep it back from your dwelling place. He said, your good works is an enriched life ready to distribute. The second thing he said with your good works, out of that same verse 21 making you ready, he said, you got to be provided a pattern for imitation. Do you know you are a pattern? Apostle preached this thing one time before and said that he used to sew. He was at a, a factory that he worked where they was making swimsuits or something. But he couldn't imagine how they was able to get all those swimsuits out at the same time. And they took one pattern and put it at the top and cut out all that material and made all those swimsuits at one shot. We are to provide a pattern for imitation. We are the imitators of God. When he said in verse 21, make you perfect, make you ready in every good work to do his will, part of doing his will is for us to be an imitation. We've got to be the one that can be in the process of somebody being able to imitate what God has done in and through us. Look at Titus chapter 2. chapter 2 we have to be the ones in this season to provide a pattern for imitation you don't want nobody imitating your nastiness you don't want anybody imitating all those holes that you patched up and don't want to dig out because <laughs> it's, it's real Titus chapter number 2 and verse Seven out of the King James Version. He said, I'll read six. Young men, 
Likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. We don't see that today in our world. They're far from being sober-minded, but this is why we have to provide a pattern for imitation. When they see a brother and when they see a sister as the young ladies patternizing themselves after something that has substance. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things, verse 7, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness. Good Lord. So you mean to tell me I can't walk around and operate just being corrupt, being dirty, being nasty in every way, shape, and form? No. Because if I'm in the place of spiritual preparation, I got to check myself that I'm constantly not operating like what we're reading right here. He said, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness. When I looked at gravity, I said, what you say, God? He said, gravity. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, my people need to be stable. Don't be all over the place, all up in the air, all high and mighty in your own thinking. Because sometimes we get so caught up in our own thinking, it takes us into places. And by the time you realize where you are, you so far off and far gone, you don't recognize that God is trying to pull you back into a place. He said, be still and know that I am God. Plant your feet on solid ground. Don't move. Be still and know that I am God. I've got you. I'll sustain you and keep you still. You know how situations will turn around and cause you to get so hot and aggravated and you just go there. Pshaw, you're gone with the wind. And before you know it, you like on 10, 20, and you're in a whole nother region, a whole nother atmosphere and universe, and God said, I need you to come back because I, I, need, I need you. I need you. Come back. You know, went to 20, and I'm, I'm trying to get you back at zero. I need you at ground zero. I need you here with me. And it, it's, it, it's easy. It is very easy because, see, one thing we have to realize, in making you perfect, making you ready, he is causing us to acknowledge our ways so that our ways will no longer become an interruption or a violation for spiritual preparation. You, we, I don't know if we're going to have time to read it, but it's amazing. When Satan came to confront Jesus, he challenged him with all the things that he already had access to. Told him all the things that he already knew that was a part of him. But see, you got to realize that in the right place at the wrong time, and in the wrong time at the right place, the enemy will mix up and confuse anything in your life. This is why we got to be spiritually fit and grounded so we are not tricked by the devices of the enemy. He said sincerity. Or do we have sincerity in these days and times? The patience to be sincere with one another. Sound speech, verse 8, that cannot be condemned, uh-oh, we might have sound speech, but are we condemning people when we're talking? Because see, how could you minister spiritually to an individual when you don't have sound speech? I can't cuss you out today and talk about you. I can't criticize you and then God needs to use you to speak to that very individual. But your sound speech is nowhere to be found. Now you got to make up something to tell that individual because you can't clearly hear. See, this is a part of making you ready. He said, because if you're going to operate in God's power, his power has no limitations. His power doesn't have certain standards. His power doesn't come with reservations until you get yourself right. Well, apostle, don't use me today because, you know, I came in with an attitude. How? Don't, don't ask me to pray. I'm not praying today because I don't, I, don't have, I'm not, I don't have nothing to say. I'm not ready. Really? 
But the word said, make you ready in every good work to do whose will? His will. So when he's talking about all of these things, verse 8, he says, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. You don't want nobody to have nothing evil to say about you. Nobody shouldn't be going around the corner saying, psh, 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 psh. <laughs> I know what saying. It shouldn't be. Because if somebody got something to say around the corner about you, then guess what? Your good works are not perfected yet. And the perfection is not perfection according to the eyes of man. It is making you ready in the face of God because God said, I know when you're ready because I can turn around and I can have your foot stomp. I can turn around and I can have them talk about you. I can turn around and call you up a hundred times and you won't cost the body any worry, any shame, any controversy. The time is coming, and every time I hear of shootings and I hear of different things that's happening going on, it, it, is, it is such a depressing thing to hear so much stuff that's going on in the world. And it's like, God, are we ready to combat all these things that are happening? God said, we are. We've got it. We just got to know that we've got it. Let me, let me, let, let's, 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 let's finish this. So he says in the latter part of verse 8 that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again. When it's spoken, it's said, it's asked of, just do it like Nike say. Just do it. Because God said, I am not a respect a person in this season. And I heard Deaconess Rachel when she, when she prayed this, this afternoon, this evening, she said that we're all in this. We're all accountable. We can all be used. That fast did something, I believe, for us. That fast brought us into a place, even to the point that some people are still on their fasting regimen. Some people have been calling on the things that God has already promised them during the fast. There are things that are happening on a consistent basis, but I love what he said. He said, listen, he said, and to please them well in all things, not answering again. I shouldn't have to call you again. This is what God is saying. Because listen, if I'm making you ready, I don't have to call you and do an attendance check to see if you're ready. This is the hour when you got to know that you're ready because when they come to you, when they come through the door, when they show up on your homes, when they show up at your jobs, when they show up in, in, in the line in the grocery store behind you and they are looking for an answer, are you the solution? Go with me to Romans 16, 25 and we're going to read this out of the CEV. Romans 16. This is for us to help others get ready. You here tonight, so I believe you ready. Romans 16 and 25. This is still you providing a pattern for imitation. EV translation. Verse 25 reads as this, Romans 16 out of the CEV. Praise God. He can make you strong by means of my good news, which is the message about Jesus Christ. Listen, Paul was a bad man. When I read this thing, I had to reread it again, and then I reread it again because the salutation, if you go back up to verse 
19. Let's read 19. I am glad that everyone knows how well you obey the Lord. But still, I want you to understand what is good and not to have anything to do with evil. So just in case you get it twisted, I'm reminding you that you ought not to have nothing to do with evil. Verse 20 says, then God, comma, pause, think about it for a second. I'm going back to 19. I am glad that everyone knows how well you obey the Lord, but still, Pause. Think about it. I'm glad that everyone knows how well you obey the Lord. But still, I want you to understand what is good and not to have anything to do with evil. Evil will creep up on you. He said, I know you good. I'm glad that you know how to obey the Lord, but I need you to know that the enemy is going to come at you as a roaring lion. He's coming at you, seeking you out to devour you. But still, I want you to understand what is good and not have anything to do with evil. Verse 20, then God, who gives what? Peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. So you mean to tell me, if I hold fast, if I hold on, then you mean to tell me, when I shun evil, he said, then God who gives peace, we just read in Hebrews, he makes us perfect because he is the God of peace. He makes us perfect to prepare us to be ready to fight the good fight of faith so that we don't lose in the battle. Do you realize that the word said the battle is not yours? It never was yours. It belongs to God. But I just need you in a place so when you realize where you are, I got the rest. Oh, God. Oh, God. Then God who gives peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. I pray that our Lord Jesus will be kind to you. Now here's where I, I got tickled at the salutations. Verse 21, Timothy, who works with me, sends his greetings. And so do my relatives, Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater. The people around Paul all had purpose. All had relationship all was able who works with me sends his greetings and so do my relatives see when you get into a place that you become that pattern of imitation for those that are around you they will either succumb or they will retreat but when you are standing that means that everything around you has got to stand this is why when you dig those trenches and dig around you like Apostle talked about on Sunday, you start to remove or excavate all of the things, the people, the circumstances, the situations that is in your life that is causing you to fall short of God's glory. God said when you are mixtured, when you are mixtured, the word said, and I believe that was Daniel, when he talked about that, that statue, he said that they created it out of clay and iron. Well, guess what? When clay hardens, it doesn't stick to iron. It separates itself. So you have to know the people that are even around you in this season. Everything don't stick to you. Everybody won't stick with you. Everything won't understand your relationship with God towards spiritual preparation. My hunger is greater than my relationship with you. Oh, God. 
Verse 22, I tear this, also send my greetings. I am a follower of the Lord, and I wrote this letter. Gaius welcomes me and the whole church into his home, and he sends his greetings. Arrestus, the city treasurer, and our dear friend Quarters send their greetings too. How is it that you turn around and you got a mass and a multitude of everybody operating around you, saying the same thing, greeting in the same manner, exalting people in the same likewise? Why? Because there was a pattern of imitation. Paul became their witness. So everything that you are, you begin to duplicate and multiply what you are upon somebody else and sometimes you find them like well why are they talking like them or why don't they sound like them it's not a point that you're trying to be them because the word says I'm making you ready making you ready means I'm preparing a body when an army goes out for war somebody don't have on purple fatigue they all got on the same color fatigue because they all have the one purpose oh my god my god my god Woo! This ain't the time that we separate ourselves to be distinct on our own. But we run like an army. We move like a troop. We leap over walls together. We go into the trenches together. We pray and intercede for people together. This is how real spiritual uh, preparation takes place. This is how the real power begins to enter into an atmosphere because when the same sound is going forth, when the same thing is coming forth from out of the mouths of the people, God said, I hear one voice. I hear one sound. I see one body. I'm not looking over there at somebody with an attitude. I'm not looking over there with somebody that's looking at somebody else cross-sided I see one body I see one mind I see one heart flowing and I can enter into an atmosphere like that and I can destroy yokes I can remove burdens I can cancel out sickness and death I can retract diseases oh God oh God oh my God my God my God oh glory he said in verse 25 praise God how do I praise him? I can praise him when I know that there is a sound, when there is an echo, when there is a sensation of his spirit that is going forth in and through us because our good works is going forth. He said he can make you strong by means of my good news, which is the message about Jesus Christ. So you mean to tell me when I read that I got excited because he said, Paul, when he began to tell this, he said, I made the people strong by my good news. Do you realize that when we testify, when we start to share what God has done and is doing, do you realize that you strengthen your brothers and your sisters? See, before, it's amazing, because back in the old days, people used to get up and they would have testifies, testimony service. And you had some that just wanted to get up to just say anything. But when you had those to get up, and I'm telling you, they had, the, they had that salutation. I rise and give honor to God who is the head of my life. And it, it, it's amazing. When they go through that, it seems and sounds cliche. But that was a part of the pattern. Everybody that got up, I rise and I give honor to God. I'm not here because of my own strength. I thank God for the blood running warm through my veins. I thank God that he kept me all day long. I thank God that he brought me from a mighty long way. I thank God that he kept my children, that he provided for my home, that he put food on the table. He put clothes on my body. See, listen, this is stuff that they begin to testify about. And Paul said here, praise God, he can make you strong by means of my good news oh my god people in church got excited because somebody was testifying of the goodness of Jesus that it wasn't of their own works it wasn't from their own bank account it wasn't from them going into the store buying the clothes it was the way that was being made out of no way it was the choice that they made to rise up that day and say God I'm gonna trust you even when I can't trace you Oh my God, my God. Oh God. He said for ages and 
ages, this message was kept secret. Why was it kept secret? Because those that were not in a place of spiritual preparation didn't have nothing to say. They were murmuring and complaining. And see, when ages and ages of God's message is kept secret, then that's our fault. Because there's always something good to talk about in God's word. There's always something to say to encourage somebody else. He said in verse 26, but now at last it has been told. The eternal God commanded his prophets to write about the good news so that all nations would obey and have faith. All nations would obey and have faith. Do you realize that there are some people that don't even know how to obey God? Because they saw no pattern behind it. What it does when you obey God? Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's go real quick. Jesus. Let's go to Micah chapter 4 real quick. I feel like I got a lot of places to hold because we didn't read that. But go, go to Micah chapter 4, the King James. People need something to see, someone to demonstrate. There's a spiritual preparation to operate in God's power. Micah, chapter 4, King James Version, beginning at verse number 1. He said, but in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. Do you realize that people are getting ready to flow upright? Because people have been down so low. People have been at that low place for so long, but guess what? We can't be there no more. We can't come and meet them on that level. They've got to have something as an expectation. So when they come in, look how they dress. Look how they talk. How they walking in here. Look how they think that they arrived. You on their level. Because they expect that from the street. They expect that from family. They expect that from people that they've normally been used to having to be defensive against. But God said, when I am preparing you spiritually to operate in my power, you don't see at their level. He said here, but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountain. The people are not going to come in at the top, they're coming in at the bottom but we're bringing them to the top. <clears throat> he said, it and it shall be exalted above the hills and people, people, people shall flow unto it. Do you realize that that's automatic growth in the kingdom? That's growth in the church. That's growth in your home. That's growth in your community. Because when you come out on the high place, good works, one of the other portions is demonstrating your faith. Even if I don't feel like I belong on the mountaintop, I'm going to the mountaintop. I'm going to stand up there by faith so that somebody can turn around and see the good works. Even if I don't recognize them myself, I got to know that I've come from somewhere and that I'm somewhere different. Because he said, every day, new mercies I see. So I'm not the same like I was yesterday. I'm not going to experience the same things I experienced yesterday because there's something new that's happening in me. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? I'll even make a way in the wilderness. I'll cause rivers to show up in the desert just to birth you and get you into a destined place. 
So by faith, I'm on the mountain. Woo! My Lord Jesus, listen, listen, listen. He said in verse 2 of Micah chapter 4, he said, and many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob and we will and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. Do you realize that they don't even understand and know what's going on but they know they want to get on that road. They want to start walking. They want to understand what you're understanding. And the only way you understand it is when you clear from the people and the things around you and get into a place of building. He said, <laughs> and we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now listen to what verse 3 says. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. See, we don't have to worry about trying to be the judge of everybody that's on the mountain. Get out of people's faces, get off their part of the mountain, and focus on yours. Listen, why, why she on the mountain? Why, why he up there? Why, what are they doing there? Don't worry. Mind your business. Because see, a part of good works is being ready to distribute. Not distributing all the nonsense and, and the crazy trickery stuff. He said, but given to distribute the peace of me. Oh boy. He said in that latter part of two, he said, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. But look at what he said in three as we were going. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. You ain't got to worry about rebuking. Just keep doing your job. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares. I love this. And their spears into pruning hooks. He changed their weaponry so that it's not effective against you. So anything that comes up there to try to dare, dare to take you down, God said, I've changed their weaponry. So you don't have to worry about it. He said, and we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. See, while we wait and to hear from everybody else, God said, open up your ear to me. I'm speaking. I got a lot to say to you. Going back to Hebrews, finishing out that verse 21 out of chapter 13. He said, make you perfect, ready, in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Yep, right there. I looked at this and I got excited because I said God is doing some great things in his people. The last two points of the good works and being ready is to demonstrate your faith without fear. Out of James chapter 2 and verse 17. And the other one was summons others to do their task. See, the important part is not just about once you get to a place and you grow, but it's about finding others and just pointing them, hey, why don't you, hey, come on and do this. Hey, we need you right here. Because sometimes we don't know that we're ready. But God knows. 
And God seasons those who is in spiritual preparation because God wants his power to be revealed. Do you realize that his power brings healing, deliverance, <laughs> miracles? It opens doors. His power consumes darkness. His power, it ignites your faith because things are happening right around you. So I encourage you on today to continue to be steadfast. Continue to keep digging. Because one of the things that God showed me with abandoning your place in your position. He said, you forfeit your right to surrender to your promise, your eternal promise. But then he said, your, my spirit fortifies you. And I said, well, God, we all stand in need of being fortified. But he said, no. He said, I want to stretch the minds of my people that even when they encounter danger, pain, adversity, or anything that they don't understand, I'll give them courage. You need courage today. Courage to do his will. Courage to be in spiritual preparation. Courage to operate in ways that only God can operate through your life. You are the chosen one. For each and every one of us in this building today, you are the chosen vessel. You've been set aside, cut to be fit for his use. So on tonight, I want you to remember one thing. We're in the mold of spiritual preparation. The miracle signs and wonders, I pray constantly. For God to demonstrate the miracles in the lives of his people. We need to see the signs and wonders that God has. One of the amazing things is I've been reading a lot of the New Testament. And the one thing when Jesus stepped on the scene, people showed up because they knew the things that were getting ready to happen. I'm praying to God that people just step on the scene because they know that something is about to happen because of your life. Because of you being the witness that you are. Every Sunday we're seeing more and more people come into this house. And they're coming in because they're seeing something in you. They're feeling a hug from you. They may be seeing your smile across the room. I don't know what it is, but they're here and they're coming. So imagine us all on that mountaintop and pulling people up to bring the kingdom to a place of expansion. It's happening now. It's happening. And we are the people to make it happen. Amen. Come on and give the Lord some praise. If anybody had anything to say, any comment, anything they wanted to share before we dismiss. If not, we have a couple of announcements. Then we're going home. Amen. We have Michael Frove over here. Pretty much all week uh, in different aspects of prayer. I have to say God really has been dealing with me. Well, maybe it stems from the word that Apostle <laughs> spoke on Sunday, digging around yourself. But in a part of digging around me, I just saw a lot of me. And sometimes you don't want to admit 
the stuff about you, you know, the, the nasty stuff about you. And even thinking like my marriage, all of those things where I could think that David could do so much better, then I just began to think about me. And you know, what I could do that could be so much better and you know, how I could be more patient, how I could be more supportive. Just, you know, the digging from around me, you know, the stuff that I found or try to find justification to hold on to, to give excuses and make excuses and, you know, be maybe even like the victim, things we don't want to admit about ourselves. And God just kept pressing on me basically in my spirit to, to know and to say, let every witness speak the truth. Let every witness tell the truth. And, and I've been speaking that in my spirit all week and even in the prayer tonight, let every witness tell the truth. And to me, this is what you were talking about as well tonight. Let every witness tell the truth. As we know, we have to tell the truth. We have to tell somebody. And then there was the scripture that you read, Romans 16 and 26. But now, at last, it has been told. The eternal God commanded his prophets to write about the good news so that all the nations would obey and have faith. One of the scriptures that I use in my business is um, write it down and make it plain. And the thing about writing the vision and making it plain, people always say, write the vision and make it plain. But the reason that we write the vision and the reason we make it plain is that so that others can follow. That's the rest, that's the other part of the scripture. And this says it here, write about the good news so that all nations would obey and have faith. Those who have a testimony, let them speak the truth. So I just wanted to uh, just share that and talk about that and moreover just to say that it solidified in my spirit what I've been feeling, what I've been going through. And the bottom line, you know, I just have to come clean. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try to be short because you said so, so much, Evangelist. I, my God. You were talking about in preparation about sowing in righteousness. And I was just talking to an individual about the importance of sowing. Because a lot of people don't realize, you, the, the scripture says it, you will reap what you sow. And sometimes people say, well, yeah, I sowed that seed, but I was a different person then, and I don't, I've changed. Yes, you have changed, and God does forgive us. And yes, it goes in the sea of forgetfulness, but you will reap what you sow. And a lot of people believe that, well, I just did it and it's over with. That's why when you were talking about the importance of preparation and, and sowing righteous, sowing in righteousness, you know, not just being in the body of Christ and sowing seeds and say, well, yeah, I did it, and God forgives me, now I'm going to move on. Yes, you are. God does forgive you. You are going to move on, but you will reap what you sow. No man, gets, no man is above God's law, and no man gets away with anything. So that preparation is so important because when something comes back for me, and this is just me personally, I say, okay, God, am I reaping or are they sowing? I said, let, let me understand what's going on. And if God says, no, nope, that's them sowing bad seeds, I just say, well, Father, have mercy. I'm going to mind my business. But if it's the case where it's something that I'm reaping, I'm saying, okay, God, well, let's get it over with. Let's, let's do this and let's move on. But just understand what, what Evangelist was talking about, the sowing in righteousness, that is so important in a preparation. And she was talking about a pattern and 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 us being that pattern for other people. So that means we just can't do anything and just be like, well, God's gonna forgive me, so I'll just do it and it'll be okay. No, you're teaching that person to do that. And when the reaping season comes back for that person, they can't handle it because we didn't prepare them correctly. So, oh, awesome word. When I say thank you, thank you. That's, that's so powerful and that, that's a key point when you start sowing in other people's lives, they are not prepared and equipped to handle that. And they don't know what hit them. Be, I'm telling you, we got to be very, very careful. We, my God. Yep, yep, yep. My Lord. 
evangelist, amazing woman of God. I just simply want to say thank you for the word tonight. Thank you so much. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you, we thank God tonight. We are growing. We are growing. We are growing, and it is a beautiful thing to be able to grow in the things of God the way God is allowing us to, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, just by way of announcements on, uh, what is this, 12th, Sunday, Friday night's regular Bible study, Sunday the 12th is Super Bowl Sunday. We're having the Super Bowl party here at the church, and it is free to come. Um, wear your jerseys or wear whatever you want. Um, you can come fellowship. We're going to have dips and chips and all the other good stuff. Um, but if you want to eat the unlimited chicken and fish, that is going to be $25. And it also comes with all the other stuff as well. You can stuff yourself. And I think there's like five different flavors of wings and there's fish. And then there's going to be tuna and uh, uh, what you call that chicken buffalo dip and spinach dip and all the good stuff and salad so come have a ball celebrate with your church family for a little while even if you have someplace else to go just come and stop by and it would just be an awesome blessing and then don't forget next Friday night is game night at 7 o'clock p.m. so bring your game your game face um, we plan on having a lot of community game events that everybody can participate which is an absolute blessing sister latrice does an amazing job with our game night so make sure you come out stop by there's going to be food as well for that so just come on out eat fellowship and laugh and play games then on saturday the 18th there is the singles fellowship valentine special that's going down at two o'clock p.m if you have not seen Minister Stacy, see her. Yes, I see. I've been I've been watching y'all and seeing all the good stuff that's been going down on your event. So make sure that you just um, get to see her and um, sign up so that there's enough food. Amen. Praise God. It's just a lot of food this month of February that's going on. A lot of stuff to be able to. Yes, getting that weight back should have just all salad. No. <laughs> Everybody stand to your feet. And I'm just asking you guys to keep me and my daughter and uh, Michael and little Rel. Michael goes to represent the state of Connecticut, 60 pound division in the National Boxing League, the Silver Gloves. So we will be in Independence City, Kansas. I don't even know where that is, but listen. <laughs> Independence, Kansas. So just keep us in prayer as we go across the airways. We'll be arriving back uh, Sunday midday. So I'll be coming right in the Super Bowl right from the airport to um, have fun and fellowship with you guys. And I told them, we're bringing the belt back. I said, we're bringing the belt back. So there is a link if anyone um, wants to watch live. I'll be posting it so that that way if anybody wants to tune in, you can for the four, five days, four days um, in that. Amen. If nothing else, let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Precious Father, we are so grateful to you and we're thankful, God, that you are spiritually preparing us to enter into a greater place in you. Father, we thank you that we are seeing your power being manifested, oh God. We are digging things from around us, oh God, that ought not to be. And most of all, we're on the mountaintop and we will not come down, oh God. Thank you for covering every individual as we leave this place, but never your presence. Protect us, cover, shield us, oh God, that nothing, no harm, no danger will come nigh to our dwelling place. You are our matchless Savior and our keeper. And until we come together again, we thank you for all of these blessings. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. You are dismissed. Hand sanitizer.